Have you ever been woken up in the middle of the night by someone knocking at your door? It can be an unsettling thing, right? Because that just doesn't happen in the middle of the night. People come knocking on your door because they know you're asleep. And you automatically get up out of bed with this skepticism. Like, what's going on? Is something wrong? Why is this person knocking on my door in the middle of the night? It's just not common anymore. Uh, somebody will text or they'll call you. Uh, they'll send a FaceTime, whatever it might be. But we know that our culture is completely different than the culture that the Bible tells us about. So I'm going to read to you um, Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 13. This is from the New Living Translation. It says, Then, teaching them more about prayer, he used the story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, A friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, Don't bother me. The door is locked for the night, and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this. Though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask you for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? A lot of reading, but, you know, we're starting to cover this. We'll be several lessons on it, so we wanted you to hear the whole thing through. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've never read the New Living Translation, it's actually written on a fifth grade level. So it's actually good for children to understand. So it's English on a fifth grade level. Uh, but today we're going to begin talking about this parable of the friend at night. And this individual comes and knocks on the door, and he wants some bread for a visitor. You know, in our culture, if someone knocks on the door in the middle of the night, it's a scary thing. But in biblical culture, it wasn't all that strange because when people traveled, they didn't have GPSs. They didn't have an exact time of when they'd show up. There was no way determining what was going to hold them up or if they would get there. And many times they traveled at night because in the desert climate, it's cooler, right? It's a lot easier. They didn't have air-conditioned vehicles. So whenever ever this happens and it shows up at the door, it probably wouldn't have been that uncommon a thing to have been woken up. And here we see this individual uh, asking for this bread, and Jesus says, you know what? He's not going to get up and give it to you because he's your friend, right? You come knocking on my door in the middle of the night, I'm probably going to be a little bit out You woke me up. What are you doing? Can't this wait until the morning? He says, he's going to give it to you because you're persistent. You keep asking for it. And that's why he's going to get up and give you the bread that you need. Uh, you know, sometimes people will even get up and give you something, uh, one, so you don't, right, like he was saying, so you don't bother them anymore, but also they want to save face. They don't want to lose the reputation they have of maybe being a good neighbor or a good person or, hey, why wouldn't you have helped this guy out? You know, that's our culture. You know, that's what we do around here. <coughs> and um, it is amazing to sit and to understand this story and know that we have a God who knows our needs mm -hmm. um, and all he wants us to do is trust him and ask and seek him to follow after him and he is going to bless us with uh, such wonderful things and power. Right. You know, we're caught off guard when someone knocks on our door in the middle of the night. Well, God is asking us to do that. Come to me when you're in need, right? Mm -hmm. Come to me when you're darkest hour. Come to me when you have these problems because he even goes on and talks in our scripture. He's like, hey, look, you guys uh, have children and you're evil. He's talking about all of us, right? Our hearts we're are unpure. Evil. We're, yeah. <laughs> and he says, you know how to give good things. Yeah. When we did this with the kids, you know, Jeremiah wanted a lot of Legos for Christmas. He's like, hey, Jeremiah, what if we gave you a poisonous snake instead of Legos? That would have been mean, right? But no, we gave you what you wanted. We gave you Legos. And God's saying, hey, look, you're evil and you know to do this. How much more is the heavenly father, right? The righteous one, the holy one, uh, the one who is without sin. Whenever his children call out to him and ask him for something, what's he going to give them? 
what's good, right? He's not going to give them anything bad. Right, and we give out of limited supply. God gives out of no limits. He has no limits, no restraints. He gives everything that he gives is good, mm -hmm. and we have to trust him in that, and we have to know that he has our best interest, and if we ask and seek and knock, he will always be there with a good response. Right. He's going to get up and, and give you what you need, or at least give you an answer to what you need. Mm -hmm. uh, so going forward, we want to remind you, uh, read and study the Word of God every day. Read this parable several times. Uh, uh, we will probably have about six lessons on this parable in our home, and we'll share those with you as well. But remember, uh, God's Word's important, right? We want it in here, right? We want it up here. We want the Word of God in our life, and that's why we always encourage you four things that we want you to do. Exalt God, encounter God, edify yourself by reading the Word of God, and engage this world for Jesus Christ. And that's a daily thing. It's not something that you just do once a week and get by. It's something that we need to persistently pursue. Until next time, God bless you. Good